Hi, Lisa K. Donner here, Editor-in-Chief of Liberty Nation, and with me today is Tim Donner. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Lisa. Joe Schaefer. Hello, Lisa. And Graham J. Noble, all hailing from different parts of the country, but we have united to discuss impeachment madness. So, throwing caution to the wind, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi began impeachment proceedings against President Donald Trump. So if you're watching this, you know the backstory. So in this brief video, we'd like to chime in with a little bit of analysis and commentary. I am gonna start with you, Joe. What do you make of them starting the proceedings before even seeing what was in the conversation or hearing? Well, it's just par for the course for what we've seen all along. They're reckless and irresponsible and they don't even seem to realize the potential damage of their own situation. They're not holding a strong hand here. When it come, when this narrative comes out, when the truth comes out to what Joe and Hunter Biden have been up to in Ukraine and especially in China, th this is gonna look a lot worse than any conversation that, that I read that transcript as I'm sure all of you did, and it didn't look like a lot to me, but there is a lot of corruption with Hunter Biden, uh, other prominent Democrats like Dianne Feinstein. Uh, all right, you know, all right, let's open let's the whole ball that. up. All right, let's talk about that corruption a little bit. Uh, Tim, what do you make? Uh, is this Was this a chess move by Trump to get this whole thing in the uh, public square because the media was ignoring it? Well, it's like so many other things that Trump does. It occurs to you that since most of his actions tend to accrue to his benefit, that he has a game of 3D chess on his mind. I have no idea whether that's true or not, but he does see the weakness in the Democratic position, the opportunity for the media to be forced to cover Joe Biden's corruption. And look, they said that the deal was a quid pro quo, either you investigate Biden or we won't give you foreign aid. That turned out to be true, uh, not true. They said Biden was mentioned eight times in there. It was mentioned about three times. It turns out that the whistleblower, which you should read as deep state operative, did not even have firsthand knowledge of what he leaked, leading to the conclusion that we all now know more than this whistleblower did when he blew the whistle. All right, now this is interesting, uh, Graham, because uh, it, believe it or not, on CNN, Time Magazine columnist Ian Bremmer admitted that Joe Biden has a problem. Quote, Biden does have a problem here, by the way. I mean, I have to say 50,000 a month for Hunter Biden clearly to be selling influence because otherwise no one would ever pay him that kind of money for a company that frankly was pretty corrupt and has been before and has been since under investigations. What do you make of that, Graham? Uh, yeah, it certainly is a messy situation, Lisa, and I, 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 I honestly think that that is the the reason why this uh, uh, this longest winded ever impeachment process that has essentially been going on for almost three years now uh, suddenly came to a head almost, you know, almost unexpectedly. And I think it's because of the panic um, over the Biden situation, because, you know, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, uh, has absolutely no business being on the board of directors of, of any energy company, Ukrainian or otherwise. I mean, he doesn't have the resume for it. He doesn't have the, uh, he, he, you know, he's not in the energy sector. Um, so, you know, clearly him getting that position in the first place was was a was some form of kind of pay to play. Yeah, Joe, you know, I was interested today to hear uh, a lot of Democrats basically referring to Donald Trump as a mob boss uh, after hearing this conversation. What is that about? It's about they live in their own Hollywood movie. They live in fantasy land, and this is what they see it as. Uh, they're going to get destroyed on this narrative. Uh, this, when this comes up, Fox News had an article uh, just summarizing some of the allegations. Let's just call them allegations now. How is this going to look to the American people? Joe Biden and Hunter Biden fly in 2013 on Air Force Two to China. Ten days later, Hunter Biden's firm has a $1.5 billion deal with the Bank of China. 
I mean, it's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're gonna get destroyed, and this and Trump knows this. Trump goes into these things knowing they're holding a weak hand, and then he can force them into attacking him with their weak hand. It's amazing that they keep falling for it. Tim, you think you think this is this is the bottom line here uh, that you know Democrats are really going to be hurting as a result of these impeachment proceedings, or or do they have a point? I think uh, Joe Schaefer himself put it best when he described the Democratic primary and thus the direction, the presidential primary, the direction of the party as being like a progressive game show. And that's what it's like. It's like, let's pin the tail on the impeachment donkey. And they keep missing the right location and they just keep trying. But this time they really mean it because Nancy Pelosi's on board. I can't help but think that Donald Trump is drawing them into the exact thing that he's wanted them to do all along, which is to begin impeachment proceedings against a president one year before the election in a in a roaring economy with record low unemployment, record high employment and every other metric. I mean, I don't think that Trump can win 50 states, but I'm hard pressed outside of California and New York to wonder what the Democrats can win when the only thing they've accomplished is repeated impeachment hearings against a duly elected president. Okay, but Graham, Nancy Pelosi finally broke down. I mean, she was kind of a holdout there when it came to impeachment. Now she kind of has mud on her face. I mean, did the president, let, let's just get down to it. Did he actually do something illegal, wrong, bad, no, no, evil, in asking for some information about his possible opponent? Uh, no, no, I can't see why how any rational person would, would come to the conclusion that he did. I mean, certainly going by that transcript, there's not only is there, is there nothing in that transcript that is incriminating in any way, but also if we're going to start talking about the uh, US politicians reaching out to foreign sources uh, to to uh, benefit themselves in an election, then, you know, we got a whole list of people we got to talk about before we even get to Trump. Yeah, you know, it was interesting, Joe, as I was reading the uh, transcript that we published immediately on LibertyNation.com, I, I was fascinated. It just sounded to me like the Ukrainian president was kissing up to Trump. I mean, it just sounded like that kind of basic conversation. And, and I would think he's going to be embarrassed now. Yeah, you know, but again, they don't really care. This isn't about the best interests of the United States and our potential allies. This is about they'll burn down the whole country to get to Trump. Um, I like what Graham just said in that this is going to open a can of worms. And this is exactly why people voted for Trump. They wanted this can of worms open. And I would like to see it be like the the uh, outcry over the Jeffrey Epstein thing where everyone said, expose the pedophiles. I don't care who they are. Well, let's expose the people who sold out our country to foreign dollars. I don't care if they're Republicans. I don't care if they're Democrats. Democrats have brought up Mitch McConnell's ties to China with his wife and his family. Let's investigate it. Maybe there's nothing there. Maybe there is. Let's investigate all of this. Let the chips fall where they may. And Dianne Feinstein's going to be hurting after that happens. And a lot of other Democrats as well. Tim, I'm going to give you the final word, but before I do, I just wanted to mention a friend of mine said today that she watched the impeachment proceedings on uh, YouTube. And I guess they have, you know, running comments uh, as people, you mm -hmm. know, in, in, in real time, they type out what they think. And she said she saw a lot of Democrats saying, I, I don't know if I can I can vote for this party anymore. I mean, I, I just this is this is getting outrageous. Well, I think the important point to be made here that's lost through all of this and the thing that will persist after the latest impeachment theater is over and after we go back to the business of the country, or at least Trump does while the Democrats still try to tear him down any way they can, is the fact that a faceless deep state functionary was able to insert himself into the American foreign policy by leaking the conversation 
a secure conversation, supposedly, of the president of the United States talking to a world leader. How many world leaders do you think are going to trust that their conversations with any president from here on in will be safe and secure? This is extremely damaging when we've reached the point where any faceless, deep state, permanent bureaucrat who objects to something that the president does can go leak it to the media. Yeah, well, this is uh, just the beginning. Thank you all very much. Tim Donner, Joe Schaefer, and Graham J. Noble read their fine articles on LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback. Have a nice day.